<laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right, let's see if I can figure this out. So to start with, I was born at a very early age. <laughs> and then I was faced with choices. So that's kind of the central of what I want to share. We all have got choices to make. So early in my life, I, I chose to make some bad choices, some bad associations. Some of you guys know my story. I'll go quickly over some of the highlights before I hit what I wanted to share. Um, but October 5th, 1985, I was um, getting a motorcycle ready for the racetracks because I raced speedway and flat track. And we were out in the country hills up in Berry Creek. And we were ru running down these big logging roads. And quick story, just to bring it to a conclusion, um, I was going way too fast, being a little squirrely, and I happened to have uh, met a drunk driver. But I happened to meet him at 115 miles an hour. So I hit that car head on, or hit me head on. So that choice I made totally altered my life. And it gave me a lot to work through. So my little 15-year-old body went through 18 surgeries in less than 18 months, had my leg 90% removed from the knee down, and all kinds of bad stuff you can think. But it taught me a few things. I had to grow up really fast, and I had to determine what I wanted. And I began very early to speak positively to myself, because I started speaking very negatively prior to that. So I was just looking at Rich's little uh, binder back there, and he has these two books. And one is called uh, Self-Talk Solution. The other one says, what do you say when you talk to yourself? Oh, and these were in my notes right as I was talking last night. And I was going to actually brag on Clark a little because he introduced me to some of these books when I was in my teens. But you guys have literally got to change your self-talk. If you are not speaking positively to yourself, you're just on a dead end every single day. So I want to bring that as clearly as I can. And I also want to make this super clear. You're going to fail your butt off. I'm sorry. I can't help you with the failure quotient. You're going to get your butt kicked, and you're going, to, you're going to have all kinds of failures. But if you fail enough, what does Michael Jordan say? I shoot more than everyone else, so I make more baskets, right? He may not have said that exactly, but we all understand the concept. Then the bottom line is you got to figure out who you're going to associate with. The reality is, in my high school years, I chose to associate with people making and manufacturing methamphetamines. Kind of a bad choice, would you agree? So I started down that road. And unfortunately, I thought it would be a good idea after becoming completely addicted to methamphetamines to be introduced to heroin. It took me down that road even further. And it totally destroyed my life. Take 85 pounds off this body, and you'll realize what bottom looks like. Enter Brent Gove. So I was a teenager trying to figure out my life. Enter Alex Dyer. Both these two men are in my life today, and they were in my life then. And I associated with those men. I associate with them now. So I want to ask you guys, who in your life has been alongside you? Who will you die for? I will die for both of those men. I believe they would for me. I'm not going to test it, but. <laughs> okay, so the, the other thing I want to kind of hit on is you guys got to work on some daily habits. I've had some good success in real estate. We've closed a little over 1,000 homes myself. The team, I think, is, is getting close to seven, 8,000 closings. So we understand the sport of real estate. I certainly haven't done what Tom's done. But Tom's in a maniac, but he made the, the, co the comment really clearly, transactional treadmill. I mean, if you can't retire after selling 1,000 homes, you better figure something else out, right? So enter EXP. We now have the opportunity to attract agents. So here's a couple tips. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on Matthew Stewart's. You guys got to put a list together of 100 people immediately. And if you're not connecting with these people and letting them know, I want you to join my team. I know it's probably not a good time, Cindy, but I want you to join my team, okay? If you make that point, they will remember it. And I'll say something like, hey, Josh, I wanna have a quick conversation with you. You good with that? Absolutely. Hey, I wanna be upfront with you. I like what you're doing in real estate. I know it's probably a bad time, 
but I'd really like to have you on part of my team someday. Can we have a quick conversation what that would look like? Absolutely. Right on. And they're going to tell you no. I told Brent no. All those names he listed early on, all of them, Tom, all, myself, we're on his team now. He didn't give up. He moved forward and found people, right? So you got to set some daily habits. Here's one habit that I do every morning. At 6 a.m., I read two chapters in the Bible. I want to understand what my role in life is. It doesn't have to be your role, but I want to figure that out. So that's what I do. And then I read 10 pages every day. And I actually lead several book clubs. So get involved with your community. Lead some other agents. But I'm telling you guys, you are not going to attract people if you're ugly. If you're ugly inside, who wants to be around you? So you need to figure out what you don't know. And what do you not know? It's what's in these books. Okay? What do you say when you talk to yourself? Your self-talk solution. Clark, I couldn't be more grateful for how you guided me as a young teenager. It literally changed my life. Took me from the depths of drug use where I was literally about to die. And I followed men like Clark. I followed men like Brent. I had buddies like Alex. You know what? I haven't touched a dope for 25 years. Right? People will fall into addictions. I have been a heavy alcoholic. Okay? I have been a heavy drug user. I don't know if there's a drug I'm not fond of. So the reality is I have to keep myself away from those temptations. I need to find the association. That's why I associate with these men. I associate with these women. I want to be around, John, stud. I want to be around people that have my best interest. I want to sew into people like Tom and Pitt. By the way, success mortgage, please get a hold of Pitt. We all want to make this thing better. We own them. <laughs> too, too strong? <laughs> No, we own success. You guys are stuck. We own success. How am I doing on time, Rich? Three minutes. All right. Brett says he'd beat me. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's the path to success to attract. You got to call two agents a day. You got to let them know what your intentions are. Tell them you want to be on, they, you know, you want them to join your team. But here's the final piece. If you do not have some value proposition, why would they join you? Truly, why would they? If you're not a big producer like Tom or some of these big players out there, you say, I, I can't say that I've sold a thousand homes. I can't do some of these things. I don't know if I can attract agents. Really? How many agents out there are databasing? Maybe two, three percent of them? Who's doing all the sales? Two, three percent of the agents? You sit down and have a conversation with an agent that you want to join your team. You say, look, I want you to join my team. How are you doing on databasing? And they're probably going to say, I'm not. I kind of need some help. Would you be open to having a conversation with our team so that we can show you how to advance into databasing working the KV Core platform? Ask the question. And I'm going to encourage every single one of you, shameless plug, please, every Friday, 10 to 11, Alex hosts a free KV Core training in there, and if you want to have a great lead-in with an agent to recruit them, sit down with them and say, I will teach you how to database. Be sincere, but you can't teach them unless you know it. Do you agree? Is that enough? All right. All right, let me leave this, this guys. Oh, there's a quick story I want to tell you about TVs in, in the Japanese market when they were making TVs in the 70s. Incremental changes is really important. What the Japanese chose to do in the 1970s is they actually created these workstations where the worker didn't have to get up to go get parts to assemble the television, and they created less friction. And you've got to start your habits small, so they're easy. You do some audacious goal every day, you're probably not going to hit it. But choose something small. Say hi to two agents. Don't even ask them about EXP. Just call them, talk to them, find out what's going on. Get into the habit of reaching it one minute. Okay, thanks. But in 1970, they did that. By 1974, they were selling, the, they, they, the American television had five times more repairs, requests. Five times. 
We had garbage TVs. Japan was whooping us. By 1979, it was taking our workers three times longer to build a TV that was five times worse. So what they did is they created incremental success, little goals for their workers. They created no friction in their environment. I'm asking you guys to create less friction in your recruiting. Just talk to people. Build your connections. Hey guys, I'll leave you with a few of these thoughts. Life is messy. Take some notes. You will face choices and they won't be easy. You must learn to get better. Self-talk, okay? Get out there and fail. Get radical. I got that from Brent. Get excited about your life. Nobody else is. <laughs> Massive action, baby. Let it rip. You have to get, you, you have to get your dreams in action. Whose life are you changing? I don't live my life to make mine better every day. I literally am built to serve. You guys will get to know me. I will turn over any rock to help any one of you guys. The secret to sex is getting in the right room. Baby, this is the right room. Come on, Brett.